Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. I got another Master Duel video for you. So, uh, I wanted to come back to Twin Sprite uh, to cover... I wanted to cover at least one Sprite variant that wasn't a Synchro variant. Because I do think that there is still a lot of legitimacy to the Sprite engine that I think a lot of people were frankly sleeping on. Um, I am very surprised to like never see Sprite decks like ever. Um, because the deck is definitely still good. Uh, and it's... it's Interesting too how when Beaver in particular went to one, it tanked everyone's interest in every variant, including ones like Twin Spray that didn't even play the Beaver. But um, yeah, so I definitely wanted to, you know, also, you know me, I love sprites. So uh, I feel like it's my duty, my obligation to make sure that this deck stays on everybody's radar. Um, I think Gishki Sprite is also another very good variant that nobody is playing right now. Um, but Twin Sprite, I think, is probably the best Sprite variant right now. Uh, and I think this is actually true, regardless of if you're playing a more quote-unquote traditional Sprite deck, or even if you're doing Sprite Synchro, I think this is probably still the way to go. Um, maybe even better than like Ringo Worm in that regard. And I talked about this a little bit in, I believe at the time this is going out, yesterday's video, uh, our latest This Week in Master Duel, wherein uh, we saw a twin Sprite Synchro list that actually got top eight uh, at a recent tournament. And I think the reason that it did well, um, particularly over maybe a list that's using like Ringo Worm and Cyber Skagit, uh, like I've been using in Sprite Synchro, is because um, the, the variant that I've been using with the Ringo Worm and such is very reliant on two card plays. And in a lot of ways, pure Sprite can even be kind of reliant on two card plays. Um, you know, just needing to have that extra level two, like, like, it's true that for sprite decks, what you all you need to get your plays going are any monster plus a level 2 monster, because, you know, even if it's not another level 2 monster, you can still link them for elf and elfing back the 2 and then go into gigantic, right? But that does still require 2 cards, and in pure sprite, with the beaver at 1, um, and, you know, that limitation severely hurting us, it becomes more difficult to have the 1 card plays. Twin Sprite, however, has very little trouble having one card plays with Kisakiel and Leela and Trouble Sunny and Secret Password all representing just that. Uh, not just one card like Twin or just Sprite plays. Um, like, you know, there is Starter, right? But Starter for Blue, for Jet, is like, without anything else to back that up with, is kind of a mediocre line, especially if you're not like a pure Sprite deck and you are like a variant that... Um, you know, isn't able to access the rest of its engine, uh, it can be a little bit tricky if that's all you have access to. But again, with Twin Sprite, in this list in particular, we have, what, three, six, nine, ten one-card plays. It's a fourth of our deck. It's just one-card plays or cards that find are one-card plays. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the main reasons. That is, in fact, the main reason why I do think that Twin Sprite um, is pretty much the way to go if you want to see a lot of competitive success with Sprite. Uh, the non synchro variant in particular has a lot of flexibility for the main and the extra deck uh, in, for, in terms of like what it can play. That's another big advantage to this particular variant of Sprite is that uh, you're relatively non-committal in, you know, uh, what you have to have for play because again as we discussed in depth uh, You only need one card to start, you know, your plays a lot of the time So we can play three Imperm and two Valor and triple or and a Joel Lockbirds and triple tack and cross out uh, We get to play all this stuff in the main deck um, Because again, we have so much room in the main deck and room to be flexible same with the extra deck here, too like we're on two of each, Kisakiel and Leela, but if you needed a flex spot in this extra deck, you could cut one of the Leelas. You technically only need one to actually do your combos, but uh, you do need two Kisakiels for turn one plays. Uh, because you make Kisakiel, and then Kisakiel brings back the Leela in the yard, and then you make Evil Twin Leela, and then that brings back the Kisakiel to draw a card. But then you also need to be able to link those into the second Kisakiel, so that way Kisakiel can bring back Leela during your opponent's turn to get the pop. Another relatively cuttable card from this deck for both budget and just space reasons in general is the Trouble Sunny. I have the one in case it comes up, but this card's main function in tw Twin Sprite in particular is mostly, I find, for OTKing, right? Uh, the Trouble Sunny represents 5,500 damage by itself. Uh, you know, it attacks for 33, and then it tags into these two, and that's 5,500, so... 
Um, it doesn't really come up that often though, it's very cuttable. Um, also, for budget reasons, if you want to, you could cut Secret Password. Uh, you don't need to play this card, but I like having additional copies of, again, Trouble Sunny to find these two. Also, I think that two Trouble Sunny, one Secret Password is optimal over three Trouble Sunny, because if you're playing two of this and one Secret Password, right, and you open both these cards, you can activate Secret Password for potential Ash Bait. It's, it's like the most minor reason in the world, but I do think that it is still optimal to play one Secret Password and two Sunny Stitch over three Sunny Stitch, but we're playing three and one, so that's obviously fine too. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything I have to say about the list. It's a fairly standard twin sprite list, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's still obviously working out great, um, and I really have no complaints about it. It's just a very solid deck overall. So, uh, let's break this list down card by card, and then we'll see some Duelist Cup games. Uh, we're gonna be on 2 Valor, 2 Droll, 3 C, uh, 3 Max C, that is. Uh, sorry, I usually fully pronounce the card so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's no confusion. Let me do that here. Uh, we're on 2 Effect Valor, 2 Joel and Lockbird, 3 Maxi, 3 Live Twin Kisakiel, 3 Live Twin Leela, 1 Evil, or sorry, 1 Live Twin Leela Treat, 1 Live Twin Kisakiel Frost, uh, 2 Sprite Blue, 1 Sprite Jet, 2 Sprite Red, 2 Sprite Carrot, 3 Ash Blossom and a Joyous Spring, 2 Triple Tactics Talent, 1 Secret Password, 3 Live Twin Sunny Stitch, 2 Called by the Grave, 1 Cross Out Designator, 2 Sprite Starter, 1 Sprite Smashers, and then 3 Infinite Permanents. That's going to be our main deck. For the extra deck, we are on 2 Gigantic Sprite, 1 Number 2 Ninja Shadow Mosquito, 1 Downer Magician, 1 Divine Arsenal Ah Zeus Sky Thunder, 1 IP Masquerina, 2 Evil Twin Kisakiel, 2 Evil Twin Leela, 2 Sprite Elf, 1 Nightmare Unicorn, 1 Evil Twins Trouble Sunny, and then 1 Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. That's going to do it for our list. Let's go ahead and see those games now. All right, so I did not watch the games ahead <laughs> this time, so couldn't tell you off the top of my head what each of these duels are going to be against. Although this first one I do remember, we had to play through a few disruptions, if I recall correctly. We'll see if that's the case. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, this hand's looking great, though. Fantastic. I'm going to start with the live twin Leela. Okay, they do have an Ash Blossom, but we have the cross out for that, so maybe I am misremembering. Or maybe they will have another one. Who knows? Anyway. Well, I should if I had watched it ahead. <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and just negate that Ash Blossom. I'm a little bit worried they might have a Maxi. Uh, because I won't be able to use the Ash Blossom in my hand for the rest of this turn. But, yeah, it doesn't seem like they do. So, we're going to use our Twins to go into the Gigantic. Gigantic will pull out the blue. Blue effect will activate to bring out the jet. We get a special the jet. Already got the starter in hand, so we'll go ahead and grab the smashers here. Gonna link off the gigantic and the jet to go for our sprite elf. Uh, sprite elf is going to target, I believe, the Kisakiel. Uh, should be, yep. Uh, but they have a Didi Crow for that. That's that's right. That was their other disruption here. That's right, I remember this now. So we don't have a way to get around that. Unfortunately, that means we will not be able to set up live twin stuff. We can still set up sprite plays for sure here. Uh, I'm going to start her for red and then link it, basically just to get it in rotation, off for the IP Masquerada. Uh, now the elf can bring back the red during my opponent's turn. We've also got the Valor and the Ash. Like, like this might seem like a pretty mediocre board, right, to see both the elf and the IP and that's it. Like, you're like oh, a sprite board should have more than that, but... Remember that our opponent did play two of their disruptions, so they only started with four cards. And we still have, again, the access to red, the smashers, the Valor, the Ash, and the IP. So that's a lot of disruption for our opponent's fairly few cards here. Uh, they're going to start off with the Hero Lives, which is actually a pretty interesting card for them to activate. Because before the latest selection pack, if you saw a Hero Lives, it'd be like, oh, well, that's obviously just going to be a Hero. But now it could not only be Monodium on the a Hero Lives engine... It could also even be the Gate Guardian deck, which often plays a Hero Lives for Prisma to copy one of the names. Although, as I covered in my Gate Guardian deck profile, uh, I don't think that's the optimal way to play. I think the Armageddon Knight combo is better. But I'm definitely going to Ash Blossom this, and this is one of the reasons why I'm not really a big fan of a Hero Lives in either Monania or Gate Guardian. Is like, there's so many games where you must activate this card and just pay half your life points to get Ash, or pay half your life points to get maxied and then have to play kind of awkwardly after that, so. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, 
Not the card I'm the biggest fan of. I'm not saying it's bad in either of those decks, but... So here I actually decided to grab the Jet and not the Red. The reason I opted for Sprite Jet here is not only to add a follow-up play in the form of the starter, but on top of that, um, if I grabbed Red, I'd have to give up like my Elf and then I can only IP for Unicorn. I think I'd rather try to go for a Goddess here. Pona is going to follow up with a Triple Tactics Thrust. That's going to end up adding another Hero Lives, which is perfectly fine with me. They're going to pay half their life points again for the Prisma. Prisma is activating to reveal the Visus, or rather the Vicious Astrolabe. Um, that will in turn allow them to send the Visus Starfrost. However, I'm going to Veiler here because I know the opponent's deck well enough to know that one, they really want this Prisma to become Visus so that way they can link off for the Scareclaw line. But two, I also know how important the that access to the... Uh, Scareclaw line is going to end up being for, uh, you know, this deck. So, if I can stop them from getting that, then I definitely want to make sure I'm doing that. Also, I'm clicking my opponent's Tri Brigade here because I never get to see these animations. Due to you need, due to you need to be at, I think, 2,000 or less life points in order to actually transform the Shuri gear, but... Oh, that's right, that's right! They actually kind of plot twisted me here. They actually are on a Tri Brigade variant, so... I was wondering, like, okay, wait, is this Tri Brigade Scareclaw? This is actually yet another deck that could, in theory, be on, and you know, as we can see, is on the Hero Lives engine. So, Foolish for Kit to send Nerval, Nerval F to add the Fractal is 100% fine here. They're going to normal summon a Scareclaw Rykart to add the Arrival. Again, also 100% fine. I'm going to IP at this point and just go ahead and go for the Underworld Goddess now that I know everything they have, right? Because Goddess can negate the Arrival, and the Fractal doesn't do anything here. So it's like, this is totally fine. Alright, as I said, negating that Arrival with the Goddess. Oh, they are able to summon the Vicious Astrolabe. They can do that. But, uh, yeah, they have to collide here. Oh, but Vicious Astral can't be destroyed by battle. That's right. I always forget that. So, that's why my Underworld Goddess died, but theirs didn't. Maxi is definitely a little bit late here, but it's fine. We have Starter, thankfully, because we jetted, so... Alright, I get to actually use Maxi as part of my combo line. Again, I know what their last card is. It's a Fractal, so it's like... Whatever. Also, they only had 2,000 life points here, so it definitely should not be that difficult for me to find Lethal. Oh, that's right! I did it with the Shadow Mosquito! Because <laughs> any chance I get to actually OTK with this card, I'm totally down to. So, first we'll put the, the counter on the Astrolaud, and then, yeah, next time we battle, we get to inflict 3k to them. So, <laughs> it's good. I mean, I could have just gone for the Gigantic and just done it the old-fashioned way, too, but, nah, I wanted to do it the fun way. So, <laughs> I decided to just, uh, again, any chance I get to Shadow Mosquito OTK, I will always take it, so... That's going to go ahead and do it for our first game, but of course we have a few more to see. Let's go into the next one. Alright, jumping into this next Duelist Cup game here. Let's see what we end up against. I got pretty lucky with these coin flips. I think I might actually end up going first. Most, if not all, of these games, but... Okay, so we got a Leela. No additional sprite, which means our inboard is going to be a little bit weaker than normal, but... Again, it's still a one-card combo, which is still 100% fine. Uh, this Ash Blossom is going to not only get negated, but it also allow me to take a peek at my opponent's hand here. I was actually a little bit tempted to, excuse me, to draw two here, but no, I think I'm just gonna look at their hand, right? Yeah, we always look at their hand here. So it was Tragedy, Albaz, Beast, and then the Raigeki. Funnily enough, um, and I actually ended up putting back the Raigeki because. I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know, I know that my end board can definitely deal with, like, an Albaz effect, and maybe, like, one other thing. Like, that's totally fine. The Raigeki, depending on where I end up, actually, and what they top deck, actually has a decent shot of just wiping my whole board here. Um, so, I decided to just play it a little bit safe. I think, again, the Albaz is probably going to be easier to stop and less devastating than a Raigeki would be, so... I got my twins overlaying for the gigantic, a gigantic for the blue, blue for jet. This is all fairly standard stuff. Jet for starter. Uh, starter, I'll probably just end up grabbing the 
red, I imagine, or not the red. Yeah, the red. That way we can negate monster effects. We got the elf. Elf effects is gonna bring back the kiss a kill that will allow me to then pivot into my twin plays, so. And then yeah, like I said, starter for red. All right, so this is again what I was talking about earlier where you do need to kiss a kill because you make the first one and then that brings back the Leela and that makes the evil twin Leela. Evil twin Leela brings back the kiss a kill to draw a card. But if you didn't have a second kiss a kill, then you would have kiss a kill and Leela on the field and none of them in the graveyard. So you want to link them off for the second kiss a kill. Now kiss a kill can bring back Leela from the graveyard. Uh, who can then destroy a card on the opponent's field with her first effect, so. Yeah, we get the Emperor, we get the Sprite Red. So again, we know their hand is Tragedy, Albaz, Branded Beast, and uh, we know we can definitely stop the Albaz multiple ways over here, so. They're actually going to end up ripping a Branded Loss off the top of their deck, which could definitely prove to be a bit of a problem. So, I'm going to go ahead and use the Kiss Akeel for the Leela now. Just get rid of the branded loss and not have to worry about it. And then, yeah, they're probably just going to concede after that. Uh, I did activate Elf, you might have noticed there. The Elf activation there was going for uh, probably the Jet, just to get the other starter there. I wanted to make sure that I had a body. Well, you know, to be fair, I didn't have to do that there. Because I was going to say I wanted to make sure I had a body on board to sack for the red. But I did, and it was the Kissakiel, because... The Leela can bring back the Kiss-A-Kill on the opponent's turn to draw a card. Plus, it's better to sack Kiss-A-Kill off of red anyway, because then I negate and destroy instead of just negating. So, yeah, I did not need to use the Elf there. I could have just definitely waited. It also might have been better for me to wait and see if they had a monster, because then I could bring back a Link monster. Although, to be fair, I would negate and destroy the Albaz so they wouldn't have a monster anyway. So maybe it was better to use Elf there. It doesn't really matter. Like, we knew their hand. We knew everything they could possibly have. So, uh, pretty much no matter what we did and what order, we probably just had it there. So, all right. There is that game. We still have a couple more. Let's go into the next one. All right. Let's see what we got going on with this upcoming game here. Okay. This one we are going second. Good. Good, good, good. I wanted to have at least one duel where I was. Ooh, we open Jewel and Imperm and Triple Tag. They're all very good going second cards. Put us going to begin with a Fateful Adventure and then activate the Right of our Embassy. That'll allow them to proc the Adventure F to add the Drinker back. They can then pitch the Drinker back. Or at least they would be able to if I didn't have Jewel here. Well, they have a call by though, so. I actually totally forgot about that, but. Yeah, I was thinking that 60 cards in Adventure is probably going to be Adventure Dragon Link, but. We'll see what it ends up being here. Okay, so they do get the Fateful Adventure for the Griffin, pitching the Draco back. They'll only have two other cards left, though. Oh, is this the Zodiac deck? I think this is Adventure Zoo, actually. Magical Mallet. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Okay, yeah, that's right. I don't, I don't know what's going on here with that. I must have played against an Adventure Zoo at some other point. Yeah, the I was totally following what they were doing with an Adventure line in the 60 card deck until the Magical Mallet. Is this like a Makonko deck? But why would they want to go first then? If they're trying to OTK going second. Like, I'm just trying to imagine a, like what deck would need Magical Mallet. God, this is this is one of those times where I really wish you could look at dual scup lists, but anyway. Uh, I'm going to start with a secret password and successfully bait the Wandering Griffin Rider here. Uh, this is actually, we have both the password and the Sunny Stitch in hand. Uh, granted, this is with a Griffin Rider instead of an Ash Blossom, but this is the exact interaction that I was talking about before and why I think it would be better to have one secret password and two Sunny Stitch instead of just three Sunny Stitch for the exact thing you just saw. Um, again, I had it more in mind with Ash Blossom, but we'll definitely take it with the Omni Negate of the Wandering Griffin Rider. Um, I was going to just imperm the Griffin Rider and just not have to deal with it, but I decided to activate the secret password. I was like, I just want to see if my opponent will negate it, and they did. And this is something that I think about quite a bit and that I don't really see anybody talking about is making weird plays like that to try to see if the opponent will misplay. Basically, the idea is that 
if the secret password doesn't resolve, it doesn't matter because I have Sunny Stitch in hand anyway. And if the secret password does resolve, it still doesn't matter because then I can just imperm the Griffin Rider before I commit to putting down cards that are going to stick on the field and then I won't be able to imperm. So the idea behind that is to give your opponent an opportunity to misplay um, because they might just take it. You never know. But um, yeah, we got that duel out of the way now. Uh, we got one more to see. Let's go into that. Alrighty, last game here. Again, I actually don't know. Again, I don't even remember if I went first or second. <laughs> okay, we have another going set. Thank God. I hate it when I end up having all going first games, because I never planned that. But every time it happens, without fail, I'll get that YouTube comment of being like, Uh, excuse me, you only showed going first games. It's like, uh, okay. But anyway. Uh, Abyss Actor Curtain's coming down, gonna summon itself to the Pendulum Zone, and that's gonna be all from our opponent, so... Um, yeah, I was expecting, like, a full Pendulum Magician combo, and I was thinking, ooh, the Drone Lock is probably gonna put in a lot of work here. Um, but, no, it was just the Curtain Razor pass. I guess it could be Abyss Actor, but... Anyway, uh, we have just full plays here. Puta is going to Ash Blossom the Live Twin Leela, that is... 100% fine. Could not matter less with a hand like this, honestly. <laughs> uh, I'm going to triple tack and take a peek at their hand here and just see what's going on. Uh, they had Ash Blossom, triple tack, and another Pendulum card. So uh, I put back the Pendulum card. My thought process being that if for some reason I don't find lethal, like I don't know, it just super didn't matter at that point. But here's the reason why I did put back that Pendulum card specifically. They've already used Ash Blossom, so I don't have to worry about that. Triple Tech, obviously not a factor on my turn, but if I somehow screw up, because that's really the only way I would not have lethal here, I think, uh, with a hand like this. Although, actually, well, we have starter. No, we should be fine. But if I somehow screw up, then at the very least, I know that they won't have plays because they don't have any Pendulum cards in hand, and a Pendulum deck can't do anything with only one Pendulum card, at least as far as I know. Maybe there's a one-card combo, but... I'm pretty sure they just ended up conceding pretty shortly into my plays here, if I recall correctly, but... Yeah, we got the starter, we got the jet. We're not playing the Gamma Burst, but... Yeah, they're just gonna concede here. Like, yeah, there, there's like no way I wasn't gonna find lethal there. You know, oh, I'm sorry, they connect failed, but... Um... Yeah, they have, what, the 2200 Curtain Razor. We have the Smasher, so I could even go, like, Link for Elf. Elf brings something back. Overlay that for Gigantic. Gigantic bring out just, like, literally the strongest monster in my deck at that point. Well, actually, I could bring out a Kizikiel monster and then still go into Twin Plays. But I would be too locked, so I couldn't find the Trouble Sunny. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure we had it. I, I, I have a hard time imagining that we did not have Lethal there. It would just would require me to think a little bit more than I am willing to in the moment. So I'm not going to think. I'm just going to instead end the video. Uh, thank you everybody so much for watching. Uh, greatly appreciate it. And let's go ahead and move now to our outro. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching it all the way to the very end. That means a whole lot to me, and it's also a fantastic way to support the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways besides YouTube, there are plenty of ways to do that. If you check out the description below, you'll find a bunch of links down there. One of them goes to my Patreon. You're actually seeing the names of everyone subscribed to the Patreon on the screen right now. So if you're interested in getting your name in the credits here at the end, if you want to see more daily Master Duel content, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions, I offer all of that on Patreon. I also stream live on Twitch. Feel free to go ahead and click that link and follow and or subscribe there. I also have the Discord community if you want to follow that link where hundreds of duelists have already signed up. Free to join and you can just come hang out, talk about the game, and chill in general. The final link that's going to be in the description is my Twitter. You can follow that if you want some more notifications of what's happening with the channel. So all in all, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.